In this lesson for Bobcat Cam, we're going to take a look at building a five axis table table type machine. So to do this, we actually have to have some measurements of the machine to put into the software. Now the reason for setting up a machine is probably one of the most important things besides the post processor and the post settings for creating the G code and the movements of the machine is we have to define how the machine is configured, limitations and travel directions of all the components. By doing this, it allows the software to know which components to move, which way and how much. So there's a little bit of information you need to have off of your actual physical machine before you enter them into the software. So I'm going to flip over to this other screen for a second and open up simulation of one of these already done so we can kind of get an idea of what you'll need to measure off of it and how. This will take just a minute to open. Okay, so here you can see just a basic configuration of a table table. What we mean by table table is this is a swing and then the other one's here. So both rotations are on the table. If it was a head head, both rotations would be on the spindle. If it was a head table, we'd have one rotation on the head and one on the table. Or if it was just like a four axis standard machine, usually table type would be indexer on the table. Or you can have a four axis where just the head turns. So a lot of different configurations that you can build with the software. All right, so what we need to do is we need to take some measurements of travel off of your physical machine. And using this, I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm simply going to turn off all these tools and stock and work pieces. So I have just the components now. At your actual machine, you want the spindle with no tool in it and the table with no, no part on it. So what we're going to do now is under this, under, for my information, under Axis Control, I'm going to right click on one of these tabs and do a set all to zero so you can see where the machine needs to be, all the travels need to come from. So what you're going to do at your machine is you're going to take the spindle, as it shows in the picture, all the way down to where it's just at the face of the platter of rotation there. And then that will be our zero. And we want to line it up in the X and the Y and then bring the Z down. So we got our trunnion zeroed out, our index are probably zeroed out if we can, and then just bring those down. So from here, we're able to record our travels. What we need to know from these points is you'll zero your machine here, and then you'll move like at your machine, you could jog your head all the way up. In this case, it goes 12 and a half inches, and we would need to know that it's 12 and a half inches positive. Now, if it can go down from there, like this one can go minus one into it. You're probably not going to do that, but if you wanted to put that value in there, you can. Or you can just start it at zero itself. All right, so then the X travel, it's the same thing. From center to zero, we want to know how far positive and how far negative from there. So if your indexer is kind of offset, you'll have different amounts. But this one's centered, so it's positive and negative 20 inches. Same with the Y. You know, how far does it travel positive and negative? From there, we're going to do 13 and 13 on ours, and then the C. Now you can see this C here is an unlimited spin one, so I just put minus 100,000 plus 100,000. But if you can only go 999.99 before it's got to rewind, we need to put those numbers in there, positive and negative, so that way as it's doing a cut, you know, and it's spinning along, it hits that value, it will stop, the head will lift, the index will rewind, it'll come back down and continue cutting. Same with the trunnion. This one does have a limit of 120 positive and negative. So, so if you can only move 45 and 45, we need to know those amounts so we can enter them into the machine. So once you have all your calculations off of your actual machine, you can bring those into the software. And we actually compile the settings of the software. Now, when you first build your machine, it's not going to have any machine components with it. You're just going to be entering in values for the software to use. Now, that's fine. You don't have to have the machine components on there. The software will still function. Those are just there for your visibility and collision checking if you want to set that up in there as well. If, you, if there's no components that match yours in the software and one of these other machine types, you can just draw those as, as, and save them as STL files and then import them into your machine to be used. You can get very detailed as you'll see in a later video. We're actually putting geometry against the machine components to build this machine on the one that we're going to set up in the other screen. So for this one now, we're just going to be entering numbers in off a pre-configured machine and let you see how to just do the basic setup of it. So let's go ahead and go over to our first window here where we're going to be doing the machine configuration. To get to this, we're going to right-click milling tools in the cam tree, and we're going to go to default. Default is your system settings, and this is where we want to build the machine. So we're going to go to current settings. Now under machine parameters is where we'll go to all the machines that are listed. So we want to come down here and actually add the one that we're going to make. We're going to call this 5-axis Bobcad. mill. 
then we're going to switch it to a five axis table table configuration. By us choosing one of the configurations in here, we'll pre lay out the configuration of the machine. So all I have to do is enter values. If you go to user defined, you're going to actually build the positions of the machine. And I'll explain a little bit of this, but there'll be another video as well that shows you how to do a user defined machine also. So when I press OK, that's been set. You can set your max spindle speed maybe, feed rate, and maximum number of tools in the tool changer. So now we're going to come down to the machine definition. And this is where we're actually going to set up the, uh, if we had the components as well as the travels and everything. And you can see the template laid out the axis for me. And like I was saying, if you choose the user defined, this is just a blank window. And you have to know how your machine is configured so you can enter it in here. For instance, our table table configuration has the base. The Y sits on top of the base, the X sits on top of the Y, the A on top of the X, and the C on top of the A. So if I move the Y axis, all these move as well. If I move the X, just these two move, and if I move the A, the C moves. The Z is on its own connection to the base because it moves separately. If I move the Z, nothing else moves. None of these move. If I move the Y, the Z doesn't move. And what you're seeing down here is collision checking, which is well, which comes in with the configurations. On the end of the C, you have your workpiece and stock and fixtures. And on the end of the Z, you have your tool holder and flute and shaft, arbor and all that stuff. So at this point, all we've got to do is pretty much just put in our travels and this machine is configured and the software is ready to be set up and used. So let's go to the Y. You just physically left click on the Y and it brings up the machine data for the Y axis. Here's the name, the direction, minimum and maximum values and initial values. So let's come in here and put this at the Y we said was minus 13 and plus 13. And our initial value needs to be a value in between these two. So zero is in between a minus and positive number. If these were both positives, like five and 13, we would need to pick a value in between those, like seven or 10 or something. So now we're gonna move down to the X and the X was minus 20 to positive 20. Initial value of zero will be fine. A, now this is the one we're gonna give it unlimited rotation amounts. So we're going to do minus 10,000, or 100,000, sorry. And we're going to do a positive of that as well. And then our zero between those. So we'll go to C. Now this one, we do have a limitation on it. And our C is going to be minus 120. Nope, I did those backwards, sorry. A is going to be the minus 120 and positive 120. This is the trunnion. And then the C sits on top of that and this is gonna be minus minus the 100,000 plus the 100,000. This is our unlimited travel. This will be the platter. And this is the trunnion here. So you have your Y, your X, the A, which is the trunnion, sits on top of the table of the X and then the C sits on top of the A. So this one's minus positive and minus 120. This one's positive and minus 100,000. So we'll go down to our Z. And in our Z, we're gonna go with that minus one inch that was in there, and then our positive is gonna be 12 and a half. Now 20 is not a value between those two, so I need to change that. I'm gonna make that zero. All right, so that machine has all its travel set up. So let's take a look at this and see if we can actually use this one now. So I'm gonna go ahead and okay this, and it should be in there. So let's see if I come back over to this window here, close this down, part, current settings. So you go to part when you're changing your machine. And inside of here, I have the five axis Bobcad mill. I can choose that one and okay it. So now when I go to modules and mill simulation, let's see if it allows us to run this. Now, as you can see, when this one loads up, there's no machine actual visually there because we didn't assign any geometry to it. Like I said, you can still set up your machine without the components and run the software. But as you get time and you can draw your components or acquire them elsewhere, you can associate those to the machine that you've built in the software and visually see every component moving. In a later video, we'll explain how to do that. So here we have our part. Let's go ahead and check this out and make sure everything works good. Let's turn off our toolpath, our stock, and our workpiece. We're on machine configuration. We'll slow this down here a little bit, and we'll hit play. 
and everything seems to be moving out pretty good there. You can see the table is moving both pieces around, our rotations, the trunnion and the indexer, to line us up. So here's our Z that we're staying square to, and then our X and so forth. So if I came into a front, there you can see how it's staying square there and moving the other ones for us. So it looks like everything came out pretty good on this. Let's go ahead and speed this up so we can get it to the end and see how it cuts out. So everything went along great. And you can actually look over here and make sure your numbers are correct from what you entered in because these are your actual limits, 20, 13, 12 and a half, 100,000, and 120. If those numbers don't match what you initially put into your machine, you've got a problem. You need to go back and correct that. Now, if you want that machine to be the default, let's go ahead and close this down, go back to our other one over here. Just right-click milling tools, go to default current settings, and make sure under machine parameters, that's the one there. That way, every time you open up a new file, that machine will be the default one. So we've done the machine definition. However, there's a couple other things we need to do as well. One of them is the posting. We need to choose a post processor we want associated to this. So in here, we'll just choose the BC table table mill post for right now. So now every time I choose that machine, that's the mill post that's going to get chosen. You can choose a tool pattern and a file extension if you need. Maybe this machine needs TAP extension on the end of the file. What's the default program number? Starting and increment if you're using end numbers, and some other options here as well. The next important tab as well that goes along with the machine and the post processor is the multi-axis posting page. This has a lot of different information that we're going to get into a little more detailed in another video as well. But you can see here we have a start angle type, which says select between two solutions, first solution, other solution. This comes into where if maybe the trunnion rotates to the back with the part and you can't see the part and you wanted it to rotate to the front so you can see it, you switch to the other solution and it changes the rotation direction. Machine limits, uh, you can have all limits on, no limits, transitional limits, rotational limits, and you can actually change limit amounts here. Pole handling, tool repositioning, pole interpolations, a machine definition, real machine zero is how we set it up. Work offset position means that your actual, well, look at it, if you look at it this way, when you're on real machine zero, there's going to be a work offset in the machine setup, which is your part zero, that allows you to move the part around in simulation, so that way you can see it on your screen, but it doesn't affect the outcome of the G-code, where if you're on work offset position and you go in there and change those numbers in the machine setup, it moves the part around in the simulation, but also affects the numbers that come out in the G-code. You can apply limits to the first axis rotation and second axis rotation, like your A and C as well. And then how your lists are done. So you have machine compensation and Z only. If your machine is a TP, TCP, you have that option. Um, if it doesn't store anything and you need Bobcat to take care of it, we have that option as well. So 90% of your machines will be on the machine compensation and Z only. So again, you want to have all this information as well when you go in to set up your machine and do all this in one shot. So once you have all this set up and press OK, that's the default machine. So if I was to close this all down and then open a new file, go into my cam tree, milling tools and part, you'll see the five axis machine is the one there because that's the one I set as the default. Now I could change that, like maybe I just want to do a three axis job and not worry about that. I can go ahead and just go back to the BC 3X mill and it will switch everything back over for me. Um, you can see if I do that and OK it, it has the Haas OEM post I have associated with that one. If I go back in here to part current settings and switch back to my five axis mill, it switches me to the post processor I have assigned to this one. So again, one of the most important things you can do is set your machine up when you first get into the software. If you have multiple machines, you're going to want to create a machine for each machine. If the configuration is different, travels, post processors, uh, multi-axis posting settings, and so forth. You really need to have a machine set up for each one in your shop. Like I said, in a later video, we're going to get into showing you how to assign the geometry to the components so you can visibly see it, as well as some, a little bit more detail on some of the other settings. But for right now, this concludes this lesson.